just a little interruption. Um, yes. Um, maybe I can share this uh, video for you because I think uh, we were not able to see the video on the streaming platform. Let me try to share it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Titus Aletapo. Uh, I work with the Sarara Foundation, a Kenya-based non-profit organization, uh, working to support a long-term uh, paradigm shift uh, designed to catalyze a healthy, resilient, uh, uh, and prosperous landscape in which uh, both wildlife and people can thrive for multiple generations to come. Um, I am also a Samburu uh, by tribe, uh, which is an indigenous community in the northern part of uh, Kenya. Uh, which is a, and also a pastoral, a pastoral community. We keep livestock, and uh, we keep moving from one point to one place to another to another. Um, I presented a challenge uh, during the uh, Geo Indigenous uh, Angathon for COVID, for COVID, in August 2020, and the challenge aimed to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to developing an application that will be allowing our my community, the Samburu community, uh, tribe, to build a their own culturally uh, relevant map uh, that also uses the culturally relevant um, uh, symbols. Um, uh, the, the the main aim uh, or the reason why we start we started uh, uh, developing this application is because my community, uh, the Samburu uh, tribe, have been uh, marginalized for long uh, by. Uh, colonial government and even the current governments, and you'll find that uh, most of the areas uh, are normally considered hard to reach areas. Um, and um, and uh, what we are doing is to develop an application that can support uh, the community uh, to map out uh, their territories, uh, and again, uh, in supporting them to develop uh, better grazing uh, systems, uh, having in mind that uh, currently uh, the area is the climate change is affecting us uh, very uh, very much so we are developing the application that will also assist the community uh, in terms of uh, planning uh, uh, planning their land uh, planning settlement and also ensuring that uh, the community livestock have uh, enough pasture throughout the uh, the period uh, the, the the application also will assist the uh, the county government of samburu uh, in ensuring that maybe they are they are able to provide the relevant services uh, to their community, because they will know where they are and uh, they will know uh, what the community uh, what the community requires. Uh, as a community or as a tribe, we w also intend to use the same uh, application to support our neighbouring uh, communities, and uh, it will also be a tool that uh, will be used to uh, hasten uh, peace within uh, uh, the, the communities uh, in northern part of the Kenya. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, in seeing the final uh, uh, development of the application um, and, uh, and again seeing the application uh, in use or being used by the community uh, and my community also we have a, a community-based uh, conservation uh, program that we, we support. Uh, we also intend to use the, the application or the, the application in developing maps uh, to assist the, the, the conservancy rangers in terms of uh, planning their patrols and uh, again uh, uh, ensuring that uh, maybe human wildlife conflicts are reduced because by doing so then uh, the, com the conservancy will be able to, um, to map out uh, maybe hotspot uh, for wildlife pushing, hotspot for maybe say uh, for example things like uh, um, uh, incidences of pushing and so on. Um, finally I would like to thank uh, the design team um, the team that developed the application, they did a very, a very good job, and uh, I wish me, I wish them all the best in ensuring that maybe the app is uh, up and running. Thank you very much. My name is Steven Kisekono. I'm a member of Namnyak Wildlife Conservancy. I'm Samburu by tribe. I'm an artist, though not trained, but talented in drawing, and I like it. I was given this opportunity by Taita Seletapo who is a local leader and a conservative 
and who is also my mentor uh, to draw these symbols that will be used in Namnyak symbol map applications. I'm sure this app will support the local Samburu community to address conservation issues by mapping their territories, boundaries, planning settlement, and uh, rotational grazing. I'm so excited to see these symbols being used in Amnyak Symbol uh, app. I'm willing to work with the Latapo and appreciate for the approach. Thanks. Okay, well, uh, thank you for this video. I think that was a great introduction. Thank you. And now I can share my screen and start the presentation. Yep. Can you see now? No, not yet. Okay. Done. I think now you will be able to see it. Yeah, exactly. Now it works. So, with this project, as you already saw from the introduction, it's a great project in our, in our opinion. And with this project, we link problematics of power and cartography to teams from conservation, sustainability, decolonization, political ecology, and social life. Inherently, maps are neither neutral nor unproblematic, as you already probably already know. And in 1988, Brian Harley, he was just one scholar to explore the ideological dimensions of cartography and to suggest that maps are essential to power and knowledge. And he was drawing from Foucault's idea from power and knowledge, in which knowledge production is embedded and essential to social relations of power. Um, and indigenous led mapping fits really well into that, or as other people know, uh, counter mapping. And it has become an indispensable tool in the struggle of indigenous peoples to claim their right to land and resources. And the aim of the Namnyak app was to co-design a tool with and for the Samburu community to allow them to participate and contribute to the decision-making processes regarding their land. And in this presentation, we would like to emphasize on the idea of collaboration and also the importance of the active participation of indigenous people in the mapping process itself in order to fully move beyond the colonial cartographic frame and to avoid existing absences or silences on maps which have been done before. So Titus was supposed to do, introduce the Samburu people and introduce their challenges, but you already saw some in the video. And also I can tell you that the Samburu, they're living in North Central Kenya, which is this part over here, and this is their county. And this is the landscape that they have, absolutely amazing, absolutely gorgeous. And they're semi-nomadic people. They're also pastoralist, and they mainly have cattle, sheep, goats, and camel as part of the um, subsistence economy. And livestock plays a great role in the, as a means of livelihood. So this is just a closer map to the area that we're going to map. And we're mapping the Samburu County and some parts of the outside area of the neighboring communities. Um, as I has already explained, uh, their traditional lifestyle is being altered by changing weather patterns. So because of climate change, you get very, very dry periods in which they hardly find any water anywhere. So it's really important if they have this map, if they have this app, they can actually map out water sources that they have. So other parts of, other, of the same community can go there and uh, give water to their cattle or to the herd. Well, 
the genesis of the app. At the beginning, Titus and Desembudo were interested in an application that will allow them to map their land using a unique combination of three words in the local language using local knowledge. And inspired by the chess notation, our team member, Luca Andrea, who couldn't be here, unfortunately, he suggested using a combination of the first letters of the word. However, subsequently, instead of letters, we decided to use symbols. The app generally encodes the geographical coordinates predominantly, as I explained, from the Samburu County and translates them into four symbols. So if we imagine the satellite imagery of the Samburu County and the area we want to map, basically we divide it into squares and each square is 500 meters. And then each square's, square has four symbols to refer to, to it. Um, however, that's the situation just for the better version of the app. After we have some tests and trials, we want to adjust it based on the needs and feedback from the users, which are going to be the Samburu. And throughout the process, it was really, really important for us to co-design the app in a very respectful way, based on a mutual trust and respect. And we managed to do this by constantly consulting with Titus and what the Samburu thought was important for the app and in terms of the technical aspects of the app, because I'm not a coding expert, we're very lucky to have Will on board because without him, we could not have achieved this success. So the idea to use symbols as well has been fundamental for the, for the project as it radically changes the way mapping has been previously done in this area. And as a result, and because of the oral tradition of the Samburu language, as it's not written, the Namniak app gives a very new way to label places on a map using local cultur culturally relative symbols. As I said, we have a total of 20 symbols and they're all hand drawn by the local artist, Stephen Nesiakono, the one that you saw on the video earlier. And these are some of the drawings that he did. After that, we digitized the symbols and we tried to keep as close to the original drawings as possible. So you can see all of those symbols and you have a snake and mountain tops and uh, a giraffe. You also have a wild dog. So you have all those animals with which the uh, Samburu have chosen themselves and they've chosen local animals and easily recognizable and they're something that they can relate to so it makes the app quite user friendly um, this is a mock-up design of the app that we did it uses google earth imagery however in the real app i will show you later a few screenshots we're using satellite imagery um, but it can show you the essence of the better version of the app. So you have this little person in here and he's located in a square with the four symbols, which is elephant and you can see them at the bottom. Then if you want to find something else or record something else, you just find all the 20 symbols, press on them and you will have your directory and then it will show you where the other person is located. So this is screenshots from the real app that we're building. As I said, we're using Google Earth API and these are the symbols. The first four symbols are the ones that you, which, in which you're located and the second four symbols are the ones that you have looked. In this field over here, you can also choose the symbols. So the symbols, as I said, are digitized by us and also you have them written in Samburu, Swahili and English. Because we didn't want things to be written down, we also added an audio to them. So if you double tap on each symbol, uh, you will have an audio saying the word, the animal, both in Swahili and in Samburu. Um, and the idea, as I said, was really, really fundamental. So where to next? We would like to ensure sustainability. And as you can see, we have phase one of our project, which is to create and test the better version of the app. So we're now finishing the better version of the app. Will is now doing some final touches. And then we're going to give it to Titus. We're going to show him, train him. We're going to probably make a training video. And then he can train a um, few people few Samburu people to test the app and then they can tell us the feedback, whether they've had some problems, whether the 500 meter square 
is um, suitable or not and what else we can do. After that, we plan to add voice recording, photo and note taking function functions to the app, which later on will build a website containing all this data, so a database, so that they can all have access to it. So we believe that the Namniak app will empower the Samburu and also give them a sense of ownership and control over their land through visualization, documentation, education and communication. Firstly, the app will allow the Samburu community to visualize and document their land in a dynamic, accessible and culturally relevant way, as already Titus explained. Secondly, it will improve communication. People would be able to communicate to the local government um, without necessarily having to travel and subsequently the government will be able to provide the required services during emergency through the app. Also, we believe the app is a very powerful communication tool that will improve the overall communication between Samburu community members, local park rangers, policy makers as well. Thirdly, visualizing and mapping out Samburu territories correctly. So the app will help the Samburu to map out and document their land, conduct land use planning and manage local resources in a sustainable way, in a way in which they have done so far, but they've been stopped by the government and the colonial government as well, firstly. It will combine local knowledge and local understandings of land and land use as well with technology. So another um, benefit from the app is that it would introduce the use of technology and mapping and it would ease that kind of use as well. Um, also, we believe that the app could be quite useful to reduce conflict over resources such as water and pasture. And by using the app, the Samburu will be able to map out the available resources that they have and inform the community where resources are still available. And at the same time, we're really promoting and encouraging peace between the Samburu and their neighboring communities and emphasizing on collaboration. So we would like to collaborate with the neighboring communities and uh, work together if possible. Finally, in terms of um, sustainability, this app would be fully owned by the Samburu people, which have their own county government, which in consultation with the elders, with the Samburu elders, will support the app by allocating funds for sustainable solutions to the problems they're facing. So for example, they can allocate funds for tourism because tourism generates a great income. And um, yeah. And I think that that is it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot for your presentation. Um, I have to say, um, I've um, I've been aware of the uh, Namunyak app uh, also before, and uh, it was uh, nice for me to see that update and to see that things are um, developing. And actually, it looks great. I have to say. Um, so yeah, I'll take the chance to ask uh, the first question. Um, so I think when when you work with uh, indigenous communities that are, uh, well, let's say, very far away from the place where you're based, and uh, especially now when we have corona and there are all these travel restrictions, I think that communication is um, a little bit uh, more difficult than usual. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask you, what is uh, your experience? How did you manage to basically overcome this barrier that you're not physically in the same place, or did you actually uh, uh, visit uh, the, the area of, um, of the Samburu? Yes, I do understand. Yes, it has been a struggle sometimes, but we are trying to overcome it. Essentially, the whole team is based in four different time zones. We have a person in England, which is me and William. We have Luca Andrea, who is living in Italy, Nicolas, who is living in Australia, Titus, who is in Kenya. So we have all sorts of time zones. So we're trying to make it work for everyone for the meetings, but sometimes not everyone can come. So we do lots of detailed notes and give to the rest of the team. And um, we really try to um, make sure that we consult absolutely everything with Titus and with the Samburu as well. So sometimes we cannot have a meeting, so that's why we're going to delay it for a week or something like that, so that every, we try to make sure that most people are in those meetings. Um, not being there is not 
such a big problem yet because now we're just doing the technical stuff. So once we do have full trust, I, I believe Titus also trusts us very much and we do trust him. So we base a lot of it on co-designing with him and on trust between us. Um, but hopefully we'll go there after the whole COVID situation. We would go there and we would do our work in depth with him and with the rest of the Samburu. Um And yes. Yeah, thanks a lot for the answer. Um, yeah, I think what you mentioned uh, that you uh, basically trust each other. I think that is um, very important to have trust in such uh, projects. And um, yeah, maybe you can um, also share with us I mean, there are many projects like this uh, going on now, also as part of uh, hackathons. And um, yeah, for example, if you uh, have started uh, working on this app now, uh, what would you do something different, or what are some, well, let's say, lessons learned in the process? Oh, to be fair, the whole the whole thing of doing a project from a scratch, from an idea, is a is a huge lesson that I try that I, I'm still learning. Basically, none of us has previously done anything like this before, and we didn't know how to. We knew how to have an idea for something, but we didn't know how to actually make this idea work and actually do the whole work. So, um, I don't know. I don't think I would have done anything differently. I think we, I would have tried to do things in the same way. All of us, we would have tried to do things in the same way because it has been successful so far. And uh, considering the whole situation, I think um, we've tried our best and we're still doing our best. Yeah, um, so I don't know if uh, Titus is hearing us, but... Um... Titus, if you're there, you can um, also share your side of the story, so to say. So uh, feel free to uh, just um, um, catch in. I will text him. Yeah. Yeah, I know that uh, communication um, can be a little bit problematic purely because of internet issues and yeah, the whole thing with the different uh, time zones. And um, also another thing that... Um, that was a challenge, let's say, in my work was um, basically financial resources. Um, so, of course, it's uh, great to uh, volunteer and, uh, uh, it, of course, it's also a great learning experience. But um, when you especially involve uh, people from the communities and um, Sometimes uh, it's not possible to proceed as fast as possible because it's just the financial resource that is lacking. So I just wanted to ask you, did you manage to attract some financial resources or is it still like uh, voluntarily based? It's still voluntarily. The only resource that we got was uh, the prize for winning the hackathon last year, to be one of the winners of the hackathon last year, which went to Titus and he was organizing travel and many other things. Um, at the same time, we have not had any other funding, so we're all still completely voluntarily doing this. I think at the near future, maybe we would need some funding because we would like to have a meeting with the uh, with leaders or elders from the community, um, from the com neighboring communities, so that we consult with them the app and what they would like to do. We don't want to impose or over do something so we want to make sure they're completely okay and agreeable with everything that we're doing so we might need some funding for that and we'll have to look deep into finding it because i've heard it's quite hard i've tried to find something it is really hard yeah indeed it's a it's a challenge in especially in, in all those projects um, where uh, different communities are involved um, yeah, so um, are there any questions from the audience? Or? Um, not currently seeing any at the moment. I, I have one, if, you'll, if you don't mind. I'm curious to know about the smartphone usage in the county um, and if there's been 
does everybody have them and so it hasn't been an issue or how has that influenced um you know the the product and the tool well because titus and the sambuto asked for an app applic mobile application we that's why we're doing a mobile application that's how we started the project but yes they do have smartphones most of them as far as i know of course not every single one of the sambuto and titus has told me that they have Nokia, Oppo, some Samsung. So they do have smartphones. Um, maybe if we find funding, probably um, we could allocate some funds for some smartphones for the Samburu to use. But we cannot do that without funding, of course. Yeah. So it would be selected individuals that would actually do the mapping out from the beginning and the testing out. And then We'll see how things go after that, after we have all this information. Nice. So right now, at least, it doesn't really seem like lack of cell phones is really a yes. limiting factor. It hasn't hit us as a problem yet. Nice. Um, there's a new question in the chat. Um, how do the four symbols submitted in the app correspond to the unique three words per grid cell? Yeah, um, well, we were inspired by it as well. I think Luca Andrea was also inspired by it. Um, it does not, well, they use the three words and wanted to use symbols because the oral language that the Samburu have has nothing to do with the English one, has nothing to do with Latin writing. So if we did a map that would just, an application that would just use words again, then we're no different than what has been done so far. So we're kind of still trying to assimilate them into a system which is not theirs. So we wanted to give full power to the Samburu and let them choose their own symbols to which they can relate. Otherwise, um, it works on the same principle. As I said, you have the area divided by squares and each square has four symbols. We decided to use fours purely logistically because it just allowed us to use less symbols and then you can have more combinations as well. But yeah, it does connect to the three word mapping. That's yeah, three word maps. Well, three words. That's very interesting. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, and that's that's all the questions I'm, I'm seeing from the chat right now. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think it's actually uh, about time to move to the next presentation. Um, unfortunately, our uh, next speaker is not there, and actually the speaker after him is not there as, as well. Um, he was there, but I guess his connection uh, just dropped. Um, so I think we can just uh, do a short pause. Um, I will put this banner. Um, um, we're starting soon. And um, yeah, we just um, wait a little bit and um, hope that uh, the speakers can rejoin us. <laughs> 